First, we need to discuss the blood supply of the optic nerve head. We know that the optic nerve get a pre-laminar area, laminar area, and post-laminar area. And very superficially, we have the superficial nerve fiber layer. The central retinal artery supplies the superficial nerve fiber layers, while the Choroidal circulation will supply the pre-laminar, the laminar, and the post-laminar parts of the optic nerve. But sometimes you get some branches coming from the central retinal artery supplying a part of the post-laminar area. This is not present in all eyes. In anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, there is affection, acute affection of the optic nerve over the age of 45. We know that it can be non-arthritic associated with arteriosclerosis or diabetes, or it can be arthritic associated with giant cell arthritis. In the acute stage, we get hemorrhage and edema with abrupt visual loss. In the non-arthritic form, the patient will pass into post-ischemic optic neuropathy with there is pallor and there is no cupping. On the other hand, the arthritic form, the patient when passes into the post-ischemic optic neuropathy, there will be cupping and again, there will be pallor of the remaining neural rim. And there is, of course, the giant cell arthritis that may be seen in the temporal vessels. So the whole mark here that will help us to differentiate this cupping is the pallor of the neural rim and the history of abrupt visual loss. Another example where we get active stage of uh, ischemic neuropathy and later there is marked cupping but there is abrupt loss of vision and there is pallor of the neural rim. Another character is that the, these changes are not associated with enlargement of the parapapillary atrophy. Posterior ischemic optic neuropathy where the circulation supplying the posterior part is affected. This can be the case in cases of shock, in cases of hypotension during anesthesia, or in cases of prolonged bleeding. Atrophic changes will appear in this in a couple of weeks. So this is a case of post ischemic capless atrophy but sometimes there is cupping. We depend on the history that will help us and also the acute onset of the condition. Again, the condition is not progressive. Demyelinating diseases may cause disc pallor and excavation. Trauma, direct trauma, or radiation, neuropathy, or methanol-induced excavation, all can produce excavation together with pallor of the disc. Sometimes, after central retinal artery occlusion, we get excavation of the disc. But here we get a sudden onset of drop of vision with affection of the central vision. There is pallor attenuation of the vessels. Sometimes we get sheathing of the vessels. Because of this, as I told you before, that some persons get a centripetal supply of the posterior part of the disc coming from the central retinal artery. Compression lesions of different causes may cause excavation of the disc. In this example, you get market cupping, 
but we have pallor of the remaining neural rim. An investigation showed that this is a, was a case of aneurysm of the internal carotids. So compression lesions usually occur at young age below the age of 40 or age of 50. There is pallor of the remaining neural rim and there is affection of the central vision, central field. Sometimes you get respect of the vertical line, sometimes you get a bitemporal defect, but sometimes the field changes may take any shape. On the other hand, glaucoma changes are usually above the age of 50. There is excavation, no pallor of the remaining neural rim, and there is positive family history. So we need to do a careful examination, depend, check for the onset of the condition, and be aware of the affection of the central vision and the family history. And on examination, the signs that will draw our attention that this cupping is not glaucoma. First, if you see pallor in the remaining neural rim, this is the case of non-glaucomatous, while in glaucoma, the remaining neural rim are healthy. In one study, it was shown that focal of diffuse atrophy of the neural rim was specific in 87% of glaucoma, while pallor of the remaining neural rim was specific in 94% of non-glaucomatous atrophy. Parapapillary atrophy in non-glaucomatous cases usually do not occur. Again, affection of the central vision or central scotoma will draw our attention that we most probably are, we are not dealing with glucomatous cupping. Acute onset of the condition, again, does not go with the glaucoma. Field damage, non glucomatous conditions usually get a stable field, but sometimes some of the causes of non glucomatous cupping will show some progression with time, like tumors, for example, compressing on the visual pathway. Respect of the vertical line indicates non glucomatous situation. The age, usually, glaucoma occurs in the old while in the non glaucomatous cases below the most of the cases 93 of the cases percent of the cases are below the age of 50 again unilateral or bilateral non glaucomatous cases are usually unilateral or there is marked asymmetry between the two eyes while primary glaucoma are usually bilateral color affection are significant in non glaucomatous changes, while in glaucoma there may be some reduction in the color acuity. In one study, there was a comparison of 52 eyes with normal tension glaucoma compared to 44 eyes with this cupping and intracranial mass. And it was found that in the normal tension glaucoma, the characteristic was there was an oval cupping, more frequent appearance of disc hemorrhage, and field changes respect the horizontal meridia. While in the non glaucomatous patients were young, affection of the central vision, disc pallor, and in the field there was a vertical respect, a respect of the vertical meridia. So, why do we have this association in our minds that cupping equals glaucoma? If we go to the way undergraduates used to be taught, we used to tell the undergraduates that there are four types of, prime of optic atrophy, primary and secondary consecutive and glaucomatous. And in primary, we get a pallor of the disc. In postpapilledemic, postneuritic, we get fibrosis, gliosis on the disc, and in consecutive we say we get a waxy disc with some attenuation of the vessel and changes in the retina, and in, cup, in glaucoma there is cupping. So there is deep in our mind that cupping means glaucoma. 
which is not the case. And again, in some of the postgraduate teaching, like Fikansky, there is nothing written about the Nangelkomte's cupping. Thank you for your attention.